Guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Sorry so much for the late review on the Raiden Swoop, but I've actually been really busy with my work and uh, you guys don't pay me anything, I'm sorry. Uh, but please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, like my videos. It is a lot of work and anyone out there that is doing YouTube, you know, it's for the passion, it's for, it's for the passion of writing, it's not, we're not making any money, honestly. Um, so I bought the Raiden Swoop uh, 10.0 2019 29er Super Enduro about three months ago. And uh, I told you I was going to do an unboxing, the first ride, and uh, the 500Ks. I've probably done now about 500Ks on it. And uh, this is what I think of the bike. Okay, so. With the review, I hope to review more bikes in the future. You know, uh, I love riding bikes. I love testing bikes. Now, this is how I want to test the bikes. This is how I want to review the bikes. I want to give you a, a score out of 10 for the company, the sizing, the value, the appearance, and the ride. So that would be a final score out of 50. Um, I think this is, a, this is a pretty fair system. Uh, well, this is the system that I go for. Um, so first off, the company. Radon is a direct-to-consumer company from Germany. Uh, when you buy the bike, you actually uh, head, you're sent over to Bike Discount, which is kind of like Chain Reactions. Uh, they have great prices, and I don't know who owns who. I'm pretty sure Bike Discount owns Radon, like Chain Reaction owns Nukeproof. Um, anyway, my dealing with them was amazing. Uh, they replied to emails within 24 hours, sometimes less. I actually called them twice and they were very helpful. So I will give Radon and Bike Discount a 10 out of 10. Um, and if you're looking to buy anything online, um, it's, they're definitely worth checking out. If you're buying, like, um, like I normally go to uh, Chain Reactions, Wiggles, but these guys ship to Europe, and the shipping is a little bit slower. It's normally like four to seven days, but the prices are amazing. Sizing. Okay, so in 2019, um, I think, you know, a lot of us are looking online, online for these bikes um, because the prices are so much better. And sizing is really, really vital. Um, and I think the Red and Swoop was let down by its sizing. In 2019, the Raiden Swoop came out in a 17 and 19 and 21. Um, in 2018 and prior, it came out in a 16 and 18 and 20 and a 22, so four sizing. Um, and uh, I don't think three sizing is enough. Three sizes is enough for this bike. Uh, for, you know, the top of the line bike is close to 4,000 euros. We're talking about a high-end bike. And uh, I don't think three sizes is enough really to, to warrant, like it, the fit needs to be perfect on these bikes. And I actually found I was probably a 20, um, which they don't make. So I went for the 19, the 21 was going to be too big. Um, and I had to change the headset, sorry, the stem. I changed the stem from a 40 to a 50 and uh, the bike is about right. I think... I mean, granted, the standover height now is very low on all these bikes. So Raiden could actually have an adjustable headset uh, to adjust the reach uh, to get around this. They could make three sizes, but I think they need to spend a bit of money and put an adjustable headset in this bike. So the sizing, I mean, I'm sorry, Raiden, uh, but the sizing is very disappointing. I give that a five out of 10. Sorry. Value. Look. The online bikes these days are, are amazing. We've got YT, we've got Canyon, we've got um, Commensal, uh, even now Intense has gone online. Uh, but what I've noticed in the last three or four years where YT was an amazing value, they're much more, they're a bigger brand now, you know, the, the last couple of years they had Aaron Gwynn riding for them, they have a lot of pros riding for them. Um, their value for money per like as a as a for a, the end product, I think the value for money has gone down. Um, the the spec of the bikes gone down. I mean the great bikes. Don't get me wrong, but this is where I think Raiden is coming in um, because at three thousand eight hundred euros, or I think that's 
This is actually the, the 10 sold out within a couple of, I think, two months. But you can see, I mean, you're getting a top spec bike. There, apart from the frame, which is aluminium, which doesn't bother me, you are getting Fox factory front and back. You're getting Newman wheels, which are amazing. You're getting the SRAM carbon cranks, uh, XO drive chain. It's, it's an amazing build. You, I think dollar for dollar is the best value on the market at the moment. So I give Raiden, the Raiden Swoop value for money a 10 out of 10. Okay, appearance. So look, uh, you know, appearance really has nothing to do with how the bike rides, but you know, we're all sort of victims to it. A good looking bike is, is definitely gonna put you over the line. Two bikes. One's better looking, similar bikes, you're gonna go for the better looking one. It's just our human nature. Um, so the Raiden Swoop for me is a very good looking bike. I can't give it top scores because it's not carbon. And also, I mean, it's, it's I don't know, it's, I just look at the, the most sexy bikes out there at the moment, which, um, I don't know, the, the YTs really, they, they always push the boundaries. They've always got the best looking bikes in my opinion. Uh, so I give the Red and Swoop a seven and a half out of 10. Okay, so the most important part, how does it ride? Look, I've spent, as I said, 500 Ks on the bike and I've done everything from downhill to uphill to super enduros to enduros to long 50 K rides. The bike rides well, uphill. It will get you up any hill, no problem. Um, if you're sitting down, you just grind away, you're gonna get up that hill, no problem. It's not, it's not gonna win any races, but it is, it, it's not, it doesn't bob as much as I thought it would. But when you get out of the saddle, even when the shock's locked out, it does, you do lose a fair bit of power through the suspension. Um, but if you're sitting down, it's absolutely no problem. Uh, downhill, I mean, this is a 170 front and back super enduro. This bike is designed to go downhill. It's a beast. It, uh, it eats up everything. Um, for me, maybe the, the, in the corners, I found it a little bit sluggish, um, because the rear triangle is 445. I mean, I, I kind of like a shorter rear triangle, um, but when you're going straight uh, and the track's pretty straight and there's a few corners, not really tight corners, it's so planted. It is a DH bike, so definitely amazing for the downhill. Um, enduro type riding. Uh, look, if you're, if you're planning on doing some racing on this bike, I don't think this is the right bike. Um, it it loses, it, it, it's a super enduro, it's a big bike. But if you're going up and down and, and it's uh, tight corners, switchbacks, it's a very long bike. I mean, the reach is, I think, 473. Um, and it's got a 445 uh, rear chainstay. And it's when you put the power down out of the saddle when the shock is uh, not locked out, which, you know, if you were racing, it wouldn't be, um, you, f you lose a lot of power through the suspension. I mean, that could be the horse link. This is my first horse link bike, um, but and I'm comparing it to my Banshee uh, Phantom, which is not fair at all because that's a trail bike, but my last bike before that was a specialized Enduro 29er. And I think the suspension system for Enduro racing is probably better. You didn't, I don't think you lost as much power. So, oh, and jumping. Look, the myth is out the window with jumping. Uh, 29ers can jump. This bike jumps really well. It's quite um, progressive when it comes to jumping. Uh, you can launch off everything. I've done 12 meter doubles on this bike, no problem. It jumps really well. And, oh, hang on. So what does the bike get out? Well, look, it is a super enduro uh, and given for everything it is, it is a great bike. Um, but the fact that it's a little bit sluggish in the corners and also it bogs down in the suspension when you try and really accelerate um, out of the saddle, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Conclusion, so the Raiden Swoop 10.0 2019 for me gets a 39.5 out of 50. 
Look, that might seem a bit harsh, but you know, at the moment, there's some killer bikes going around. This, this bike is the best value for money. But after buying uh, the top spec bike, I'm not 100% sure it comes down to the top forks and the top suspension and the top brakes and the top wheels. I think you need to think about the overall package. If you can go for the top spec everything, then go for it. But if you're on a budget, think probably you need to think about what you need and what you want uh, out of the bike. Um, and it's not necessarily the top spec one. They're all going to do a great job. Um, I think uh, Raiden could make some improvements on this bike. Um, definitely the sizing. Uh, the sizing is what let the bike down for me. Three sizes is not enough. Um, and also, if they want to if they want to stay to the three sizing, they should really work on a little bit of. Um, they should work on like a flip chip for the rear, much like the new Mega Tower from Santa Cruz, where they changed the rear end from a from a four three five to a four four five. And uh, also, the I would put in an adjustable um, headset, so the reach could vary from maybe uh, four six five to four seven five with three positions. I know that that's gonna, and we are talking about one of the more budget uh, end enduro bikes. But I believe if they did that, made these changes, they would definitely have a top spec bike on their hand. So that's kind of my conclusion. I really like the bike. Um, I think it's a it's a great value for money. Uh, it, it's not the perfect bike, but I don't know if there is the perfect bike at the moment. Um, I'll keep on testing them. And uh, lastly, who's the bike for? Um, it's a big, massive, super enduro bike. Um, I think it's for someone that Maybe as a cross country rider or someone that's that's new to enduro that uh, wants to learn. Um, it's a very forgiving bike. It's something that if you want to go riding with your friends and go up the hill and do a lot of downhills and go ride some parks, um, this is a perfect bike uh, if you're learning. And also, um, if you're but if you want to race enduro, uh, some enduro season series, and it's um, there's a little bit of pedaling involved, um, and you are wanting to be quite competitive, I think the suspension platform for enduro racing is probably not the best. Um, as I said, I think you lose a fair bit of power when you're putting the power down. Um, so yeah, I would say it's probably best uh, for like a a park bike and uh, someone that wants to go riding up the hill and go down the hill really fast. Thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions hit me up. Peace out.